Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report and every Thursday and with emergency uh, reports any day of the week. Uh, Professor Tim Alexander, Lord Sterling, will show up with his uh, geopolitical, historical, and military analysis, which is unprecedented. And you've got some very scary news to tell people and some questions to ask our audience. Uh, let it roll, uh, Lord Sterling, yeah, I, Tim I, Alexander. I, well, you've got I something to say. Have, uh, things to say. Unfortunately, we live in a time when to be an alarmist is to be a realist. That sounds like and, a, as I truly said by a history professor. <laughs> uh, well, I, I have a reliable report, uh, and I'm not going to say which state it's from other than it's not the state in which I live in, Indiana, uh, that a National Guard unit that just completed a training program uh, they were told that they are going to Iran. Now, I know uh, the unit and uh, where it's at and so forth, but uh, I'm, I don't want to get anybody in any trouble, um, so I'm keeping it confidential. I suspect other Guard and Reserve units have been told similar things. Uh, we have a lot of people, uh, maybe six million people listen to this broadcast, and I invite you to email me. Um, if you have any information on this. Now, I don't disclose uh, classified information. That's not what I'm looking for. But uh, if you or a loved one is, uh, are in the Guard or Reserves and have been told uh, you're going to go to Iran, uh, that ne- the public needs to uh, know this before we jump right smack into yet another war, which is apt to be the Third World War. And... Um, you can go to my site, uh, uh, Europe, do a Google search, Lord Sterling Europe, or you can go to, you can email me at earlofsterling at yahoo.com, and that is the Scottish city, not pound sterling, but the, the Scottish city is spelled S-T-I-R-L-I-N-G, earlofsterling at yahoo.com. Okay, uh, in Syria... There has have been two major uh, bombings now. Of course, the Western media is describing them as suicide bombings. The reality is they probably weren't suicide. They were probably simply in automobiles that were driven up, and then the drivers quickly got out and, and fled the scene. Uh, 55 people have been killed. This is in Damascus. Uh, almost 400 uh, injured. Um, and of course, as predicted, the, uh, the 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 very side that did it, the opposition, uh, which is all foreign based, uh, with U.S., U.K., France, NATO, Israel, and Gulf cooperative states uh, funding everything, organizing it, arming it, uh, and using uh, Arab uh, mercenaries from all over the Middle East, paid for by Saudi Arabia. Uh, they're already using this uh, to demand that the UN uh, allow them to go into Syria. Turkey, uh, a couple of days ago, the Prime Minister of Turkey has said that he's prepared to ask uh, the United Nations, or I'm sorry, to ask NATO to uh, to defend Turkey according to the North Atlantic Treaty Organization requirements. Uh, Turkey is considering going into Syria and setting up uh, supposedly a zone to defend uh, or protect the Syrian population, (laughs) which would be just like we protected the uh, Libyan population and killed God knows how many of them uh, during the recent war there. Uh, Of course, the reality is Syria is a backdoor to the war uh, on Iran and a backdoor to the Third World War. Uh, If foreign uh, military forces, and I'm not talking about the opposition now, but I'm talking about if if NATO forces, uh, Turkey's forces, in mass across the frontier, uh, that will that will be the button uh, that will be pushed. Uh, Sa has already said he will immediately launch uh, his payload, uh, his many many thousands of rockets. Actually, uh, if you count the Hassad or the um, Hezbollah rockets that Assad has uh, furnished uh, in Lebanon, we're talking over a hundred thousand missiles and rockets will be launched toward Israel and toward American bases in the Middle East, um, and that will will literally, the balloon will go up. Uh, 
the drive to a war in the Middle East and to a third world war by the globalists uh, has not ended. In fact, the and uh, this is a common consensus of uh, the Arab and Muslim newspapers all over the Middle East is that the uh, just this week, this coalition government that Netanyahu formed with the main opposition party is uh, a war government and was formed uh, as a prelude to a regional war. And that uh, is pretty much across the board throughout the Middle East. Uh, it's, that's how everybody feels it. I, I, I feel the same way. I, I think that's exactly why it was formed. Uh, Turkey's daily paper. I'm going down through a list of some things I've, I've updated here. But uh, a major Turkish daily newspaper has said the CIA and, and the Mossad are behind the Syrian bombings. Um, Just like and, the, the, the current situation with the underwear bomber is an informant. And, and, <laughs> yeah. and now they're trying to figure out who leaked the information about the fact that the CIA are running all these ops right back to Oklahoma City. Uh, in fact, that the underwear bomber is a new variation on the CIA running this operation as a psyop against the public. Well, yeah, but listen, you've got to give these guys credit. They have a sense of humor. Uh, uh, Al-Qaeda means, in Arabic slang, means little toilet. So what they're basically telling the gullible public is little toilet is running a underwear bomber operation. Oh, well. I mean, somebody's sitting back uh, uh, cracking up at this. I mean, this is, is ludicrous. If it now, wasn't so awful, it would be funny. Yes, unfortunately, it is awful. Uh, 17 countries are preparing for massive war games on the Syrian border in Jordan. Uh, this will take place in about five days. It will begin. It's, uh, uh, let's see, it's called uh, something, another line, uh, anxious line or uh, something like that. And uh, eager line. And it begins May 15th. Um, now, this is a war game that's very apt to go real. Um, it may not, but uh, it certainly has that uh, uh, likelihood there. Uh, additionally, um, we're seeing that China and the Philippines could the, it could blow up very quickly, and this, in fact, may be a attempt by by China to get out in front of the the Third World War that they see see coming uh, and try to take a strategic initiative. Uh, there's a bunch of little reefs and islands. They're very popular fishing. Uh, uh, area uh, for commercial fishermen, and it's about 200 miles from the Philippines and about 500 miles from mainland China. But China has long claimed this area. The Philippines claim it. Part part of it is claimed by other countries. To be honest and with you, the, China China's uh, policies are based on a couple of what I call cognitive dissonances. The first thing is they are just recently r risen to become an economic superpower because of a globalist transported 50,000 factories from America and U.S. transnational businesses are invested by U.S. pension funds and state funds and countries and that they are completely a paper tiger uh, literally fashioned by the globalists as a tool and in fact their idea of thinking that to take on America right now is suicidal. They will be crushed so stoutly by doing anything and that includes Russia too. Russia is toast. This month, and within two weeks, we activate a thousand missiles, uh, ARMs, uh, anti-ballistic mi missiles that are surrounding Russia. If Russia doesn't capitulate, they're toast. And their idea is they think they're going to attack the American missile silo sites around all these countries. Well, is just that's, that, that's nonsense, but the point is mutually assured destruction. They may be toast, but we may also be toast. Yeah, but, don't, don't yeah, be toast. but you know, the thing is, they'll be toast quicker than us. <laughs> uh, <dead is> <laughs> I know. I'm being sarcastic. <laughs> They'll die quicker, though. We win first, though. We die. We die later. <laughs> Welcome back, and um, 
Tim, you have some really important news to break. And I know John's been working on the story for a couple of weeks. He actually gave me a lead that led me to uh, contact Dr. Zangari back last, uh, uh, you know, over a year ago when we had the disaster at the, uh, uh, actually two years ago, we had the disaster at Macondo. Uh, when the loop curtain was destroyed, he was a nonlinear physicist from the Frascati Institute. We also, I, I got my own contacts with the uh, Woods Hole, Massachusetts, and the people at the universities in the eastern United States that were involved with doing work with Dr. Zangari, NASA, etc. Uh, he has good references. So when John does a work and he has his show from 7 to 9 a.m. Central Time, Monday to Friday on Republic Radio, he's a forensic investigator, former Special Forces. He's a a top-level, if you want to call it, forensic investigator like CSI Miami, CSI New York. And uh, he doesn't kind of mess around. I mean, he's a believer, and he's a hard nose. Yeah, so, yeah we're uh, talking about John Moore people. And right. uh, uh, Paul Martin uh, is a friend of his and friend of mine, and uh, Paul has his own uh, radio show and his own site and does excellent work. Uh, and... Uh, uh, Paul and I have been discussing this. This is a very, very strange story, particularly as we're headed towards what appears to be the Third World War. But it fits in with several other strange things. Uh, And we know at least part of this has been verified by uh, U.S. DOD, the U.S. Department of Defense. Uh, the Russians are sending a – now, this part has been verified uh, by the Department of Defense. The Russians are sending a, a contingent of uh, Spitzba, uh, special forces, uh, to Colorado uh, for joint exercises in uh, anti-terrorism. Now, what is not generally known is that there are five or six advanced units already, uh, a couple hundred uh, personnel per unit that are in the country at different Army bases, and they are planning on bringing somewhere between 30,000 and 100,000 of the Spitzba troops, which is about two-thirds of their total uh, commandos, into this country. Now, these guys are very well trained. Many of them have been taught English and have been taught to speak English like uh, someone from the Midwest. No accident. Plus, they're also a specialist in what's called four-man teams, which could destroy an entire... Four-man teams. uh, Yeah, kill teams. They can actually destroy infrastructure, uh, cut off highways, literally wreck the havoc that you can't even believe. I mean... uh, Yeah, but uh, uh, then again... Uh, we have a lot of good old boys with guns. I mean, most of my friends, even friends that I normally don't think of that have guns, women uh, are now packing because they are very afraid of what's coming down the road. And uh, And by the way, this is by invitation. People have to understand Obama is inviting Russian troops. And I said this again last week, and I gave this uh, actual as an article in the newsletter for the Prophecy Club in the spring of 1999 that the, a future U.S. president would invite foreign Russian and uh, CIS nation troops, etc., into the United States to police the American public during a time of trouble where our troops would be overseas uh, prosecuting wars. They'd have foreign troops that would be willing to shoot at Americans if they wouldn't get into the back of the truck, the rail car, etc., or hand over their guns. Well, I'll tell you what. Um... I get pretty disgusted with my countrymen sometimes because we've let the the worst crooks on earth uh, run this country in the ground. But when push comes to shove, uh uh-uh. Now, you're not going to be able to disarm this country. Uh, You're going to find, you know, uh, Admiral uh, Yadamoto in the Second World War, uh, he said, well, you know, we could, uh, maybe if we did it the right way, we could make a landing on the West Coast. But he said behind every tree would be an American with a gun. Well, I think he actually said this. He said behind every blade of grass. (laughs) <laughs> uh, let's put it this well, way. So, I'm actually uh, thinking but, of a, I'm thinking of getting a sign uh, that'll say this. I've purchased a number of excess body bags. I got in a special from the U.S. government, and I'll have them labeled with this. These are for my family, and this whole big number. These are for you. <laughs> now, which is which one do you want to pick out? Uh, let's try to, and I'll, I'll make a big effort to try to put all the parts, all the right parts, in the right bag. 
Uh, but anyway, <laughs> uh, it some of this fit, it, it fits with the fact that Obama has said that he wants to denude America of 90% of its nuclear weapons unilaterally. Now, let me tell you what happens if you take away 90% of our nuclear weapons. Uh, in a surprise attack, we would lose a very significant percentage of our nuclear weapons. One reason we have such a surplus in weapon, uh, nuclear weapons is because of that very thing, so that we have enough throw away, even if you do a surprise attack, we can hit you back and wipe you out. That's called MAD, Mutually Assured Destruction. Now, anybody that wants to denude us of 90% of our nuclear weapons, by my definition, is nothing but a damn traitor. Right. Now, uh, we need to impeach Obama first. Before we ever literally get up and have breakfast, make a current morning coffee, the impeachment process should have already started. And the last night when Mr. Obama stated after he lied in 2008 said he wasn't for gay and lesbian marriage, now he says, oh, yeah, by the way, I lied. But, of course, that's always that comes out of his mouth of lies. He supports gay and lesbian marriage. And we don't have a lot of choice, by the way, with Mr. Romney, who's another I call Flip Hananiah Romney. Uh, it's like we either have Obama or Obama light. Yeah, I, I, now here's the thing about gay marriages and all that nonsense. Uh, I, you know, uh, love the sinner but hate the sin. And uh, gay people, I don't believe in persecuting them. I, I know no, people no, are I, gay. I, in fact, I think and, they should have uh, they should have rights. For example, whether it's insurance or property rights or any of those kind of things. Well, you know, but that's they're, already but there they're, though. But that, you that's can already own there. But property that property jointly, right? You can, uh, Insurance make a person, benefits. Your 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 uh, next of kin. You can. But the idea of them being married—that's an obscenity. That's wrong, and well, it's that, not going to be made right by government. Uh, it's a religious definition, and it's also society. Uh, uh, it, it, it's human. Men mate with women and procreate families. That's how it is by nature. That's how God created it. It's also how it is for dogs, for cats, for sheep, for cattle, etc., etc. Now, I, you know, I, I don't want to be, believe me, I've been attacked by gays on my, my site and I, and all kind of stuff for saying a few things about uh, all the gays in the Catholic priesthood. But uh, it it just they they want to cram this down our throat to make their lifestyle seem acceptable to the majority of the population. They're well, about two they percent or less of the population. I don't, and I happen to think that that the people that are gay are psychologically and spiritually sick. Well, and it was it, it was in the DSM three uh, back years ago, and I still think it's a mental illness. We also know, and I took care of many gay people over the year. They, most of the people that I know that were gay had sexual encounters, were assaulted, abused, etc. when they were in their sexually formative years. And uh, they ended up becoming gay because they had confusion over what they were because of an assault when they were prepubertal or pubertal. Period. I've been a doctor. Exactly. I've seen it firsthand. Welcome back, and we have some uh, special guests, Teresa Pantanella here, uh, and our special nuclear expert, Chris Harris, joining us. I want to just read off just a bit, and the, I posted it up, the space weather. Chris Harris actually mentioned this, and uh, we are in the line of fire of a major solar superstorm. And here's what's happening. The solar activity intensifies each huge sunspot AR1476 is crackling with M-class solar flares and appear to be on the verge of producing something even stronger. The sunspot's beta, gamma, delta magnetic field harbors energy for X-class flares. That's the most powerful known, uh, the most powerful kind. The Earth is entering the line of fire as the sunspot rotates across the face of the sun. So, in other words, if we hit, get hit with a X-class solar flare that's direct to what's called geo uh, centric hit on the Earth, we will have major chunks of our satellites and ground-based communication fried, and we could be pushed back to the 19th century. So that's possible. People have to understand the magnetic field of the Earth is weakening. It also generates, by the way, increased levels of ground-level radiation that can cause major problems with our crops. It's also tied to immediately triggering off superquakes. So when you ring the Earth like a bell with a magnetic pulse, the chance of a seven-level earthquake hitting the uh, the cooling pool number four building, which is leaning and ready to fall over in uh, Fukushima Daiichi, Japan, 
Uh, it's a virtual guarantee that a seven-level earthquake w- is going to happen in six months, and a major sunspot with a solar storm will probably trigger off superquakes somewhere on the planet, as well as power outages and satellite uh, degradation from space. So this is a really big deal, along with the other big deals happening. The last, and, uh, the last really big event like that was in the 1800s when we only had uh, Her- uh, 1859, the Harrington event. Right, the Harrington event, and we ha- only had tele- uh, uh, T- telegraphs. Telegraph, yeah. And the telegraphs, uh, literally some of the shacks that people would, would work in caught fire mm-hmm. because the lines going across picked up all this uh, yeah. uh, an- ele- electronic blast. We're going to do and, an update on that tomorrow, by the way. I want to hear from uh, Chris on the updates on Fukushima. and uh, Tim, I want you to do a geopolitical analysis because... We're on the verge of also the eight maniacs from Israel deciding to hit the Boucher reactor, and we've estimated from the uh, International Association of Scientists for Responsible Government that if they strike that reactor, it'll kill 30 to 32 million people downwind uh, of the reactor. And we also know that the Fukushima Daiichi... In Pakistan and China. Right, and we know that that radiation will circulate the planet. We have on top of it the almost certainty that we are going to have a massive hydrothermal uh, nuclear or inner nuclear explosion occur in Fukushima, (laughs) <laughs> it's going to <clears throat> it will cause a massive explosion of radiation they're now talking seriously about one evacuating one 40 million right now they have not actually begun construction on any other covers remember discovered we discussed this that uh, we were trying to minimize contaminated water from running out of the plant now we did discuss last week that they were uh, starting to build uh, a wa- good groundwater intrusion type dams and, and water control structures, um, but that actually hasn't uh, got underway yet. But that really needs to be done, just like we discussed, putting a cover over the plant. And right. uh, they did Unit 1. We, we recommended that, and that, they actually took that action, which was, I was glad that they're doing that. But uh, to to really say what's going on there, well, they're still using the flimsy makeshift systems that they slapped together. They're not really doing very well. I posted some brief uh, material uh, I sent that to you about uh, these cesium absorption systems and all. They, they really aren't holding up because they're not the real installed systems. They are flimsy makeshift systems that really uh, they really can't withstand the weather. They can't withstand uh, you know all the other uh, uh, elements. And so uh, there's a lot of time and effort being spent and wasted and getting dosed, by the way, to the workers. A lot of dose, by the way to keep these systems uh, in operation to do what they somewhat are intended to do. So that, that's a, a brief rundown. There's really not much new. And, oh, yeah, there's one, one of the new things. They did a study uh, last week. They completed a study last week to validate some of the temperature elements in all of the uh, reactors at uh, Fukushima to determine whether they were really indicating true or not. And they found uh, some that are coded in red saying that they're really not tracking well, they're not re- reading right. We've discussed that, too. We really can't rely on some of the instrumentation that's installed in the reactors. So you really don't know a lot about what's going on. You know you have uh, uh, some, you could guess what's going on by some of the other uh, indicators, but they're located elsewhere where the core is not, shall I say. We want to know what the temperature of the core is, except that we know that the core really does not even exist anymore because it's like a molten mass at this point anyway. So it's not even coolable, and it's not in a geometry to prevent uh, any kind of, uh, yeah, or it yeah, will yeah. prevent, uh, you know, uh, yeah, the thing, effects from it. The, the other thing is accumulating water is becoming a new, inserted with neutrons, which is turning normal water to heavy water, which slows neutrons and increases the risk that the corium will get hotter. And we will have nuclear explosions. And... Uh, I want to segue for a moment now to Teresa because this is very important. People don't understand. We put our first line of defense kit uh, together years ago. We now have a radiation kit that is two NIOSH masks, two diatomic neutrodyne, one neutrotrol and one neutrodefense, and there are other things in our components of our kit, but this is the core kit. If you don't start taking this now, you should be aware that you're putting yourself in dire danger that there will be an explosion, and very probably this year that we will have a major explosion, and every day there's massive millions of becquerels of radiation that are being released there. One nanoparticle of plutonium is a death sentence if that impacts that radioactive flea. We have strontium and cesium. Strontium is an analog of calcium, and people say, oh, it'll just float along the top of the water in buckyballs. No, it'll be incorporated almost immediately in life forms because strontium is so avidly absorbed into bone, which will be the bones of fish and the flesh, 
and cesium is an analog of potassium. So these will be incorporated in the food chain, and if you eat food that's not radioactively being tested, and none of our food's been tested properly now, you're at very grave risk, and that doesn't mean just fish from the Pacific Ocean. It could be veggies from Indiana, or it could be wheat grown in the Midwest, because you might presume it's going to only hit the West Coast. You'd be wrong. Tell us, Teresa, what you see coming and how bad this disaster can become before it gets really bad. As they sometimes say, it's going to become catastrophic before it becomes really bad. It is really bad. And to use a good analogy with uh, the Americans out there, it's like planning the family picnic. And not only did an army of ants show up, but a thunderstorm showed up and somebody stole your car. (laughs) Oh, boy. How how about this analogy? Not only did they steal your car, while you were running for your car, you were hit by lightning. (laughs) <laughs> ah, even better, but you did not die right away. No, no, what you did is you ended, up in the, you ended up in the burn unit with 90% burns, and while you were dehydrating, you died of flesh-eating bacteria. <laughs> Ooh. All no, the imposition has come you. up with that. Kidney failure in the middle of all that. Exactly. They help you with antibiotics because they think you might, they might be able to save you. Yeah, and, and you're, of course, hallucinating because you're given all the narcotics. So before before you die, because you don't know, as they say, I do, I do this to teeth with Tim Alexander and uh, uh, Chris because we're all Messianic believers. Because you don't know Jesus, your first vision is you see Satan beckoning you with a finger. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to go, like boy. You the only one in your family that got into the emergency room, even though everyone else was affected by the lightning strike, because they didn't have any space in the emergency room. Uh, yeah, yeah. Anyway, no, we have to use some humor here, but the fact is... Now, people can take things today, though, that can protect them. And the fact is, later now, we have... We call, and they need we, to. The we, weak we, are going to go first. The sickest well, of people out there are going to go first. Well, the people weakest are going right now in utero. Kidney failures, and they're all wondering why. Right. Well, now, what's happening right now? The going first. Exactly. In other words, if people have got kidney dysfunction, the radiation is going to push their, let's say, 10% kidney function down to 5%. If they've got, exactly. If you've got 200,000 well-functioning neurons left in their cortex, they're going to be down to their last 10,000. Yeah, right, if they're in utero and developing in their blastula stage and they're trying to turn into a little fetus, they're 10 billion times more sensitive to radiation. If they're an elderly person suffering from a serious infection and they're on IV antibiotics, they're going to die. It's going to push them right over the edge. It's almost like taking somebody to the edge of a precipice and putting one finger on their forehead and saying, oops, and pushing them oh, and yeah. away they go. Yeah, don't forget to put an appeal. An appeal under yeah. the feet works better. Right, yeah. exactly. Mm-hmm. Now, People well, should and grasp and I want that the this. Listeners understand that this this is not the sick person on dialysis. This is the people who had heart valve replacements ten years ago. Right. These are the this people is, that have uncontrolled blood pressure. Right. The, these and are the people words, that are out there and, and have multiple sclerosis. They already right. have a muscle wasting disease. Right. And what if these they're go if right they're, those muscles? Plus, what happens, it also pushes people over to become acute diabetics uh, with retinal damage, retinal tears, all kinds of things. Cancer is only at the end of the trail if you survive all these things. Back in a moment. Welcome back. And uh, Chris Harris, you've got a summary. In fact, uh, we've got three reports that you've summarized here. I want you to go through them because... This is really nuts. I mean, the lives that continue about San Onofre with 1,500 of these SG tubes are damaged. They're not talking about talking about trying to reactivate these fuels. The uh, situation in Fukushima is dire when one of their uh, mayors has actually come out and said that she's bleeding from her nose and having all kinds of physical symptoms. Uh, we're now starting to get testing that's now recommended. It's going to be doing testing of clams in Washington State. Finally, if they actually start doing testing and actually report what's going on, once things really start to rock and roll, like a hydrothermal or a nuclear explosion in Fukushima, and they start evacuations, it'll be too damn late, and a lot of people are either going to become radioactive, uh, you know, people, uh, and of course, most of our food will actually become radioactive to eat, which is literally, uh, as I said in, in the small scroll, uh, they will send the seeds of death. Literally, the food that you eat may literally kill you. And so people don't understand. They don't see it right away because, oh, it doesn't taste different except it tingles on your tongue. Uh, tell us about it, uh, Chris. Okay, there are three orders that uh, came out earlier, uh, this, uh, actually earlier in May, uh, that uh, the plants in the United States will have to comply with or give a really good reason why they cannot. That, that's a pretty big caveat. Anyway, uh, the first one is to uh, be able to handle a 
really beyond design basis type events, such as just what we saw at Fukushima. They're going to have to come up. They've already come up with a lot of strategies already based on post-9-11 type scenarios. Uh, I was on one of the teams that, that, did, that did those uh, kind of scenarios, but now they have to go even beyond that. And, uh, and, and those, those uh, strategies that they came up with will be required at this point, because right now there are voluntary compliance. Um, the use of the existing plant systems is the first thing. The second one is the additional pumps and things that they should have had at Fukushima that they didn't have or were not able to access because they were not located properly. And then uh, the third, the third that, that includes like portable generators and pumps and things like that and people that know how to use them and have been actually drilled on that. That, that was not done at Fukushima. And then the third one is the ability to bring in off-site assets uh, which was not possible at Fukushima because roads and bridges were damaged and power lines were all over the place. There was really no way to get uh, assets in. The second one involves uh, hardened containment vents, which were also not exactly mandatory, but yet now it will have to be for uh, not only but General Electric Mark One, but also Mark Two containments, which uh, is going to be a challenge to install and to get them to uh, be real hardened containments that could operate remotely without any kind of uh, electrical power in case of the station blackout and no instrument air or anything like that, or no, no motive force at all. Because remember, in Fukushima, they couldn't get into the uh, areas because the radiation was so high. It, they had to delay the venting, and you had, to, you had to vent containment because you couldn't inject low-pressure water into the reactor vessel at that point because the containment was, pressure was just too high. So uh, that's a real crucial for, for general electric plants. And then the last one, of course, is the spent fuel pool uh, instrumentation so that we can remotely a uh, assess what the damage state of the uh, spent fuel pools of all the plants are. And that means we'd have to have uh, pretty, uh, well, these would be expensive modifications, but we'd have to have level indicators that would be in a location that's uh, remote and that's able to be read somehow by telemetry, whatever it is, so that we don't have the question right now is what is the status of Fukushima Unit 3 spent fuel pool? Because, uh, we really don't know. And uh, so, and also Unit 4, and there's a film Unit 1 also. And uh, so there's a lot of questions that could be answered had we installed some of these. So that's a, in a nutshell, I just, uh, that's a, really what okay. we're going through. There's going to be a meeting on uh, May 15th. So, so we're going to summarize. What, what you say basically is uh, the they're starting to scurry around, but no concrete changes in the face of something that probably the earth changes in the extreme weather, as, for example, there have been a 500% increase in, in serious earthquakes around the planet since last March 11th, 2011. Uh, this year, now with these major superstorms uh, from the sun, the latest being this uh, superstorm that's brewing on the sun in this sunspot, which is literally multiple times size bigger than the entire planet Earth. Most people don't realize how big these sunspots are. Well, Dr. Yeah. I know where you're going with this, and don't worry, because these will have to be, uh, they'll have to comply with these rules by 2016. Oh, that may be like slamming the door of the ho of the horse's barn when the horse is not only out of the state, but has already been eaten by somebody, already been passed out, and it has been, been put into the septic tank, has now been re pumped out of the septic tank, and is already fertilizer, and the barn is already burnt down two years earlier. So the idea that they are going to comply by 2016 may be way, way too late. Right, and that's yeah, and, that, and that's really the point uh, trying to make here that. Well, here's a, a possible scenario, and I'm not saying this prophetically, but let's say that this spot is the is is the big one for 2012, and let's say it causes New Madrid to cause a 7.6 quake that literally breaks the reactor containment on six out of 26 reactors. Sites. Hey, we're making up a story. Can, can you include me being in South America on a vacation? When no, you're, you're all visiting the West Coast, uh, West Coast and, you're, and, and, you're, and you're actually playing uh, in, uh, in, in our pool, and you're looking up and you see this green glow over the sky as the solar flare happens. Okay, And you, and you, and you call your, your friends back in Indiana and they say, and all of a sudden you hear it go, ch -ch -ch, you know, cut out like one of those special effects in the movies. But no, let, okay, so now what happens is, and, and this is where we get uh, Teresa, the American Chernobyl yes. is coming, isn't it? 
I mean, it these idiots coming. don't understand it. We're going. We don't. We didn't learn the lesson of Fukushima last year. Now we didn't learn the lesson two years ago at Macondo when they drilled an assault dome. They were told back as early as 61 years ago not to drill there. Now the Japanese government are still trying to figure out how can we return on these reactors. The last one in Japan was turned off this month. And these idiots in America have plans to build 35 reactors they certified under the Obama administration because it's part of their crazy green energy policy that, oh, we want to trust nukes. Even though no nuclear reactor has ever paid for itself, the, they, insure, they cannot insure it except for the public insuring it. The, the waste is kept on the site forever. None of these reactors are designed to not vent off tritium. The designs are all archaic and stupid. I mean, if they want to do it properly, it's going to cost a hell of a lot more money. And I believe that we need nuclear in the future, but it's going to be tokamak fusion reactors, thorium, pebble bed reactors. All of these old-style reactors should be closed and refurbished or converted to, power, to natural gas. And any reactor of any design within strike zone of a major superquake or extreme weather like our, we called Tornado Alley, and most people don't realize that just last in the last few weeks there was a tornado that ripped through Fukushima and the area up there and actually in a neighboring prefecture and injured a lot of people because they're now getting tornadoes in Japan. Did you know that? No, I yeah, did I not. just read that. Yeah. yeah so and and, and in out. places in Europe where they, they, they're extraordinarily rare, and a lot of that comes from the BP oil disaster and the effect on the thermal highline circle. By the way, Dr. Doc, Dr. Zangari won't come back on the program because he's frightened for his life. I don't blame him. Okay, so guess what? No, that's not a good philosophy. I do blame him, and I'll tell you why I blame him. The philosophy, when, you're, when you have a big, bad, 2,600-pound lion is growling at you, you don't run because running tells the lion that you're prey. When you come at it screaming and hollering and running with an elephant gun and a four-foot-long razor-sharp machete and a bad attitude spitting blood, they get look at you and say it because they can't tell whether you're another the size of a gnat or an elephant. They're scared out of their mind, and they are going to try to run, try to escape, or if they try to come after you, they're going to do something stupid, and you're going to bring that blade up or that elephant gun, and when their mouth is wide open, you're going to blow, blow their brains out. The problem is we have to go at these issues. And as you said, uh, Tim, very, very importantly, there's only a tiny fraction, one thousandth of one percent that are doing this. Most of the rich, powerful, even generals, they know there's really things bad coming. They know there's, there's changes coming. They know even our military policy is crazy. And on top of it, now we're sanctioning yeah, with it, Obama it, saying it, we're going to a nuclear war very, against Iran. very tiny group of Satanists that, that mm. uh, are, are behind most of the troubles that the right. human race so, faces. So, yeah, Teresa, what, what should people do today? Besides they getting like to get, our, our they first line... get water filters in place because it's, yeah. it's the aftermath. Yes, you might survive the initial blow... But you've got to prepare for the aftermath. You've got to that's why we have our first and I hear some water supply. Yes, that's why we tell them the pure water supply. system that we have will remove all radioisotopes. I hear people say, "Oh no, you should get a Berkey." I said, "Are you crazy? Do you think it's going to pull out the radioisotopes? You have no. to. You have no, to. It's, you it's have to have a pure water system." Charcoal with yep with yeah. ionizing with ionizing. It yeah, has what we have is we have none a pure water the system has most of stuff. None of this cake and water stuff. Yeah, yeah. Gone, what we have is a yeah the pure water system we have has a linear charcoal filter, the best RO membrane, and an ion exchange resin, so there's nothing except water, H2O molecules getting through nothing else. Then we add back in calcium magnesium ions, and if you don't have that, you've got a catastrophe. So that's what you're dealing with. Very bad catastrophe. And yeah, and, and I really book. say this year there's three things that I think are coming. Again, your book is called... America's Chernobyl. And Millions will die. And how do they get your book? What's your website again, Teresa? www.raddetox.com. Raddetox.com. com. We need to do some, a report on our live stream channel. I'll give you a call. Uh, right after the show, Chris, we need to do an update. And Tim, back tomorrow. Don't miss the whole show, Firing Line and More.